Okay, let's solve quadratic equations. Let's do level one of this game of thinking. Here's a very straightforward quadratic equation. x squared equals 36. That's kind of the one I started with, because if you look at this, I just said x squared. I literally said square. This is actually, you can think of this as a geometry problem. I really say here's a square of side length x, that's so symmetrical, square, bingo, whose area is 36. And you say as a geometry problem, well, what's x have to be? Oh, easy. x better be 6. Great. Now, that's if I'm being literal in my thinking about geometry. If I want the area of 36, side length better be 6, because you can't have any other types of numbers in geometry. It has to be positive numbers. But if I think of this as an arithmetic problem, then actually there's a second solution to this one in arithmetic. Or it could be x could be negative 6. I know it doesn't make sense for geometry, but in this picture it would still represent arithmetic truth. Negative 6 times negative 6 would be area 36. Bit weird in geometry, but let's, let, let's not be locked into geometry now. Let's say our pictures are going to speak truth about arithmetic, in which case we won't be literal, we'll allow negative side lengths, we'll allow negative areas, because they'll still speak arithmetic truth. So bingo, so we've done it. There's our very first quadratic equation, and we see it actually has one solution with regard to geometry, but in general, with regard to arithmetic, you'd be a little bit more open and say it has two solutions, six or negative six. That's level one, piece of cake. Let's do another one. Um, suppose I asked us to solve p squared equals 100. Uh, you'd say, no worries. p could either be 100 or it could be the negative version, negative 100. Well, 10, 10, silly me. p could be 10 or negative 10. A number squared is 100, p better be 10 or it could be negative 10 if we go into arithmetic. Piece of cake, something squared is 100. Um, numbers don't need to be nice. What if I asked us to solve w squared is 17 in level 1? 17 is awkward, but okay, something squared is 17, so w better be the square root of 17, or it could be the negative version of that square root. Negative square root of 17. Piece of cake, piece of cake. That's level 1. Fabulous. We're solving quadratics already. Love it. Now let's move to level 2. Okay, level two, here it comes. Let's solve x plus three squared is 25. There's a level two problem. Okay, it's starting to look a little bit visually scary, but if I just listen to what I said, x plus three squared equals 25. Something squared is 25. Therefore, logic just tells me that something better be five or negative five. That something, x plus three, better be five or better be negative five. Oh, if x plus 3 is 5 or x plus 3 is negative 5, let me just subtract 3 and get x all by itself. x must be 5 take away 3 or negative 5 take away 3. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's it. Level 2. Piece of cake. Um, what if I asked you to say w minus 7 squared is 49? Can we solve that one? Why, yes. Something squared is 49. Logic tells me that something better be, what, 7 or negative 7. My something better be 7 or negative 7. Uh, if I want w all by itself, let's add 7 throughout. w is either 14 or it's 0. Lovely, lovely. Now, warning, warning. A lot of people might do this. They think, okay, let me save half a second of writing and not write the word or. A lot of people say w minus 7 is plus or minus 7. Quicker, quicker, apparently speed is important. Now let's add 7 to both sides. w must be plus or minus 14. Whoops, 14. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's the danger of writing plus or minus. No need to be in a hurry. Just write the word or, and then you can see exactly what to do. Write the word or, and you can see exactly what to do. Spend that half a second writing the word or, and just let the logic be so crystal clear for you and for everyone that might want to read your stuff. Okay, use the word or, and all will be clear. That's level two. Now, things can still be nasty. I mean, like, not in logic, but in the numbers we use. For example, here's a unfriendly level 2 problem. Um, please solve 2x minus 3 squared equals uh, 5. Okay, I can do it. I might not have as much fun, but I can do it. Something squared is 5. Ugh, awkward. All right, but that tells me my something better be the square root of 5 or the negative version of that, negative root 5. All right, great, so that's fabulous. Now, let me just see if I can get x all by itself. Let me, I've uh, got that minus three there. Let me add three to everything. So two x is either root five plus three, whoops, three, or negative root five plus three. By the way, a lot of people like to just write their whole numbers first and their square root stuff second. They might write this as three minus root five and three plus root five. 
It's just a style thing, whatever you like, it's all good. Um, two x's of those things, so I guess x divided everything by two would be x is either, I'll do, I'll do the conventional thing, three plus the square root of five over two, or three minus the square root of five over two. Beautiful. Not as friendly in writing it out, but in concept, straightforward. Level two, done. Oh, oh, though I should point out something. We're starting to notice something. Something squared as five gave us two answers because there are two square roots of five. If I did this equation, uh, two x minus three squared equals zero, then you say to yourself, okay, oh, there's only one number that something squared is zero, that, has, that gives the square root of zero, it must be zero. So I get two x minus three is zero and there's only one square root, in which case uh, x is three over two. Or, what if I did 2x minus 3 squared equals negative 7? And then we realize, oh, something squared being a negative answer, never going to happen. So it looks like we're starting to notice that quadratic equations could have two solutions. Yep. One solution if you get to having equal 0, or no solutions if you're dealing equaling a negative number. All right, that's just some observation that some curricula like to point out. Okay, I pointed it out. But now we're ready for level 3. All right, welcome to level three and look at it. X squared plus six X plus nine equals 25. Oh my goodness, level ones and level two, they were fine. That one looks like a whole different ball game. Whoa, I'm having an emotional reaction. This is the first step in mathematics. When you're solving a problem, step number one in problem solving is be human, have an emotional reaction and acknowledge it. I'm scared, I'm scared. I'm actually scared of that one. Step two in problem solving. Take a deep breath and see if we can just do something. Do something with that. I mean, this looks so fundamentally different, more complicated than levels one and levels two. It actually is freaking me out. But I will notice this. I am at least seeing x squared. I don't know if it's wrong, but I can at least draw my square for x squared. x squared must be from x times x. Oh, must it be? I guess it could be two x times a half x or three x times a third of x. So the question is, do I like that? Well, if I'm going for symmetry, I might stick with the same numbers. Symmetry is my friend. The whole story is about symmetrical squares, symmetrical quadrangles. All right, so I'm going to do this piece, x squared, as x times x, and all is good so far. But I'm worried about going off the board. Let me just uh, make my picture a little bit more clear. Maybe I'll do it over here. I'm going to have a square that's x squared coming from x times x. Great. But the trouble with this form is it's got 6x in there, it's got a 9 and a 25. It's got a lot going on. So my challenge is this. Okay, obviously this picture needs a piece for 6x, a piece for 9, a piece for 25, or something like that. And I want to keep symmetry. I want to keep it to be a symmetrical square. Now there is one way and get a piece of area 6x. I've got an x there. I could actually do this and add 6 there, and that would be 6x. That'd be great. But that makes me nervous because suddenly that's not symmetrical anymore. That's not symmetric symmetrical. Oh, okay, I've got a problem. I've got a problem. So I'm going to go, go for a walk and I'll come back in you know, a couple of hours and see if something comes to my brain, what to do. Though you don't want to watch me for a couple of hours on a blank screen. Um, let me actually show you what flash of insight came, comes to one. You might eventually think, okay, if I want to preserve symmetry, let's add this area of 6x in a symmetrical way. Let's split into two parts. Let's do an area of 3x over here and an area of 3x down here. So then I've got a side, something times x makes 3x, that must be a side of 3. And this side times x must be 3x makes 3x, that must be 3 as well. There's the area of 6x in my picture, and I've kept it symmetrical. And look, what, look, look what's there, look, look what's irresistible right now. I can't help but want to complete the picture of the square, and this piece here must be 3 times 3 is 9, and look what magic happened, that was 9 we completed the square. So actually, I look at this and I see x squared and 3x and 3x, 6x plus 9, all that is reading x plus 3 times an x plus 3 as a square. This picture is saying I've got x plus 3 as a square is x squared plus 6x plus 9, and I've been told that is area 25. This is actually a level 2 problem in disguise. Because now I can solve this. Something squared is 25. My something better be 5 or negative 5. Subtract 3 throughout. X better be 2 or negative 8. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's the magic of level 3. 
can you recognize it as a level two problem in disguise? That's the only challenge. And once you've done that, you're set to go. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so we need a couple more examples. Let me clean the board. I'll be right back. All right, here we go in the speed to speed discussion. Let's solve x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 81. Why not? It's kind of fun, actually, it's kind of fun. So if I'm not getting the answer, if I really want the answer, type in the software, let's do the thinking behind this. this, is kind of cool. So I suspect that all this is a square in disguise. So this is really a level one, level two problem in disguise. So let me draw the square. Let me just go ahead and sort of jump the gun a bit and just realize I think it's gonna be a full square with one piece being x squared coming from x times x, done. These two pieces should be that middle stuff split into two equal parts, uh, negative 4x and negative 4x. And remember, I'm not worried about geometry anymore. I will allow this because I know my picture is still be speaking truth in arithmetic. Uh, so in arithmetic, something times x makes negative 4x, that better be negative 4. Something times x makes negative 4x, that better be negative 4. Which means this final piece wants to be negative 4 times negative 4. Like weird in geometry, but okay in arithmetic, that needs to be 16. So I've got negative 8x, yes. I've now got 16, everything fell, fell into, in, into a perfect array here. And I see that all this stuff, x squared minus 8x plus 16, all that is really an x minus 4 by x minus 4 square in disguise. x minus 4 as a square apparently equals 81. Welcome to level 2. Beautiful. Uh, x minus 4 better be 9 or negative 9. Add 4 throughout. x better be 13 or negative 5. By the way, this is where I, I fall apart. Basic arithmetic goes out the window for me. So am I right? Double check me. Great. Level 3. Wonderful. Okay. I think we're ready for level 4 now. 